Tonight at 8, new fears that the Ebola virus could gain a foothold on American soil. A special airplane is now on its way to the United States from Liberia with the second American known to have the Ebola virus. She is Nancy Wrightbold, a missionary who, like her colleague Kent Brantley, received a dose of an experimental serum before leaving Liberia. Brantley is the first known patient with Ebola to be treated on U.S. soil. He was rushed to Atlanta's Emory University Hospital in Atlanta over the weekend. Wrightbold will soon join him there. Meanwhile, in New York, doctors at Mount Sinai Medical Center are testing another patient for possible Ebola. We're very confident in that our work with the federal, state, and local authorities will lead to a prompt evaluation of this patient, and that we'll be able to hopefully find that there is a more common cause of fever and other symptoms that the patient has. Uh, but if, using an abundance of caution, we're going to work carefully with the CDC to make certain that this patient does not have the Ebola virus disease. CNN is reporting that about six people who recently returned from West Africa have been tested because of symptoms consistent with the disease. However, we are told none of those cases has been confirmed as Ebola. Continuing our coverage on this story now, Crown Force Charles Clifford joins us from our newsroom with some background on Ebola and just how dangerous it is. Charles. Well, Ebola was first discovered in 1976 in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Since then, there have been occasional outbreaks in Africa, but the CDC says that so far the disease has only been found in 10 African countries. No cases have been reported in the United States. Ebola is extremely dangerous with a 90% death rate and there is no cure. Here are some common questions about the disease. According to the CDC, an outbreak of Ebola probably starts when a person comes in contact with an infected animal, most likely bats. It's then spread between people through secretions or fluids. A healthy person can only get the disease by touching the bodily fluids of an infected person. The disease can also be spread through contaminated needles or surfaces. Hospital staff can contract Ebola if instruments and equipment are not properly cleaned or if workers don't wear masks or gloves. According to the CDC, symptoms of Ebola appear between 2 and 21 days after exposure. Symptoms include fever, headaches, weakness, vomiting, stomach pain, or muscle aches. Some people also experience a cough, sore throat, difficulty breathing, or a rash. There is no vaccine for the Ebola virus. Infected patients are usually isolated, then given fluids and oxygen. Doctors also treat any secondary infections that may occur because of the disease. Now, even if a patient does recover from Ebola, they can still spread the virus for several weeks after the infection subsides. In San Francisco, Charles Clifford, Cron 4 News. An update tonight about the Bay Area mother who traveled to West Africa to pick up her adopted son. You may remember this story. A co-worker of Natalie Wifnevsky tells us that she and her son are doing well and are scheduled to come back to San Francisco on August 12th. Her 14-year-old adopted son lives in Sierra Leone. Own. That region has been hit hard by the Ebola virus, which Nevsky had feared the longer he stayed, there would be more chances of becoming exposed to Ebola.